What do you want in a match? Tears, Messi and Mascherano embracing. They gave it their all. And this is what he expected. A come from uh, backs to the wall kind of performance. And those tears at the end just showed how much this meant. Well, I think we all want Argentina in a World Cup. You know, you don't actually want them out. Although we spoke previously about, you know, my hopes in some ways mm. for the underdogs and the romance of the tournament. But ultimately, you do want Messi and Co in the tournament and especially in the latter stages. And what was interesting to see Eugene Sin right from the start, positive intent, flying into tackles. I remember Mascherano uh, losing the ball, then goes right till the end and gets the ball back. That was missing. That was what we expected from Argentina from the very first game. Indeed, uh, there's a Argentina that we all wanted to see. The spirit, the belief, the perseverance. Until the last minute, you could see that they had done the best. Okay, they kept possession of the ball, but they never did, never did much of it. But they, it's just that the parents believe that it is a do or die or never, now or never situation. Yeah, and Nigeria didn't make it easy. Let's be fair, Nigeria didn't make it easy. They found a way of coming back into the game. Is this the kind of a performance, Eugene, which gets a team to bond? which really kick-starts their campaign. Yeah, with all the issues that have been surrounding the camp, it's just, it's just a way of bouncing back and showing to people that what kind of team they are, no matter what is going on. So I believe this is actually going to give them a the better momentum to go through the knockout stages. Argentina fielded the oldest side ever at a World Cup for them. Nigeria are the youngest team at this World Cup. Argentina ran 101 kilometers in the entire match. Nigeria 98 shows passion. Yeah, for sure. Um, of course, you know you're talking about 3,000 meters, three kilometers extra for Argentina. You know when you narrow it down to 10 players, it's it's a fair amount. But as we said again, regarding the physical stats of of the World Cup, it's about what you do with those meters. You mm. know the intensity that you run at. We saw the the recoveries just on the graphic. You know Argentina recovered 40 balls. That's mm. impressive. You know, even there was one point where Messi was chasing down a counter-attack right yeah. towards the end of the game. So, yeah. so there's just a, a complete change in the character and the way that they approach the game. Yes, and you brought Messi up. I was going to ask you about him as well. Because uh, what we saw in Messi was he looked perhaps uh, jaded in, in that second game as well. Here you had him leading his troops, rallying them, a great uh, second half at the start of the second half. Team talk as well, uh, you know, chasing the ball as you said. He got the goal as well. You know, in situations you expect your big players to come to the fore, and you saw these kind of big, big performances. Messi, Mascherano, yeah. cuts here and there. Looked like he got a few rounds in a boxing match. I think the the hostility that's been surrounding the team for the last three or four days. I think that's played a big part. Some people don't like it. Some people enjoy hostility. Mm. And I think there's an even balance to look at both sides. And I think that hostility that's surrounded, whatever's gone on in the camp, I think it's woken a few people up and also waking themselves up. Mm. You know, so Mascarano may have had a reality check and so has Messi. Yes, okay. and I want to talk about the Messi goal with you because uh, you're somebody who, who will spray that pass. You can tell us exactly the quality of that goal. It, it reminded me of Dennis Burkham, ironically, versus Argentina 1998. But considering the situation, considering the fact that, you know, it was 14 minutes into the game and they needed something to really get them going, what a take from him. That's sublime touch by Messi. What you see is like, there was no pressure on Benega. Mega had all the time in the world. But what a run by Messi to run between the defenders, make space for himself and the vision of Banega. And you could, the touch of Messi, the first touch of Messi was sublime. The second touch was great and the finish was extraordinary. Yeah, uh, and it's interesting you bring up Banega because I was going to ask uh, Matty to help me understand that. We've been talking about how Argentina have not been able to get Messi into the game. Mm. But you're telling me that you've spotted something that with Banega coming in, the pressure on Messi decreased and that's why you saw him making those runs. Show it to us here on your tactical Well, what, what we've got here is a set of a 4-3-3. So, I mean, some parts of the game you could argue it was 4-4-2, but I'll just go with this for the minute. And what I noticed is that with Banega, during some of the stats, I think we'll have a graphic soon fired. In the previous game, Argentina didn't play the system. They actually played this system. Okay. More of a 3-4-3, three, three. I'll just turn that off. Now, I'll hide Argentina and I'll hide Nigeria. And what you've got is during that last game, Messi was always covering on his heat map in this central area. Okay. In this game, what's actually happened is that 
Messi is always covering this heat map, map area here. Simply because, I'll take it out and I'll put them back in. Simply because Eva Benega is operating in a midfield position where he can dictate play. And from his passing statistics, it clearly shows that his presence in there allowed Messi to stay further away from the play. And he didn't need to drop any deeper. Mm. To add okay. to that, yeah. uh, you could see that the defence line of uh, Nigeria and the midfield line, they had uh, two lines of blocks, defensive blocks. So they ne never really did press Argentina high. So they were low press, give the midfielder enough time to see, to pass wherever he wanted to. Okay, I just, one more interesting point I noted at the end. You know, when they were pressing for the win, pass, 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 took Di Maria off, they kept passing. But then, when the winning goal came, that was one of the first crosses I saw into the box. Rojo was there, stamped at home. That was the plan B. They've been so reliant on the plan A. And I think that's what has been the problem in this group. That only go with a plan A, no plan B. Yeah, uh, when, when he took off the substitutions, he knew what he was doing, I feel. Uh, he took off uh, Maria, he took off the... the he took off Perez, I Perez, think, yeah. And he put, the, he put wingers on, on the team, which he knew he wanted the width. He wanted more width now to spread the defence so that there'll be space in between. So will you see that... Uh, guy who crossed the right? Who was the one who crossed the ball? Oh, Mercado. Yeah, Mercado. Yeah. So when he crossed the ball, you could see the, the defence getting attracted towards him. Mm. Left space for Rojo. And Rojo, slightly, what a wonderful touch. Are you convinced? They've gone through. It is four points, 1990 again. But France next. Are you convinced by Argentina? Can they now do damage? Or you think that it's they got over the line? This is not something France would be overtly worried about. Not overly convinced. I think they've got more than enough in their locker to go and win the game. But so France. Mm. I think it's going to be a big clash of the Titans. Um, in that scenario, you would expect Messi to come out on top, as he always does. Well, at least he did last night. Mm. Um, but I'm not overly convinced that now they'll go bang, bang, bang. Um, they've still got a bit to do. Too many frailties for me in the first two games. Mm. Quite euphoric yesterday um, with, the, with the win. Um, but I think they've still got to do a, f a far better job overall. It wasn't a convincing statistical performance. Yeah. The main statistic is they won 2-1. Yeah. Um, they won. They yeah, won. That's they won. the important That's bit. That's the main thing. Should they look at Croatia and think, this is how we should be playing? Is it time for us to look at Croatia as contenders, Eugene? Because nine changes he makes, nine changes, they still win 2-1. You thought maybe a draw. They win 2-1. They had two shots on target. Those two were the goals. Clinical performance. Yeah, you can, you can definitely see that. You've got, they've got a, a great depth in the team. The second string comes in, wins. Just shows that tactically, they've been very, very great. Defend, defend, score. So, I mean, that, like, they can play in various styles of football. Sad. Iceland going out, but they had the chance that they couldn't take it, and we saw that with Australia as well. Yeah, a little bit, um, but I think now for Iceland, they've had their two fairy tale tournaments, Euros and, and this World Cup. You know, they're doing a fantastic job in the country of a very low population mm. compared to the rest of the major nations, of course. I think they've got to try and do something again now to keep going, keep the momentum, and become a stale, um, a regular okay. participant in big tournaments. Okay. Romanticism over, time for realism to set in for Iceland. <laughs>